everyone. So it is Friday. And so I wanted to do one of my Friday reads where I talk about all the things that I have finished or am currently reading this week. It has been a tough week. Um, both of my kids are sick. They both have croup, which if you know anything about croup is worse at nighttime. So not much sleep happening, <laughs> you know, like we're napping during the day a little bit, but like, yeah, um, not getting a lot of sleep at night. I am listening to a lot of audiobooks because I'm like, just like staying awake a lot, um, making sure they're breathing at night and all that. So yeah, it's just been a tough week personally, but um, still reading things and it helps me escape. And you know, they're having a lot more lazy time because you know, they can't really do a lot of active stuff right now. So that's the last few days here. Um, and let's talk about things I finished. So I finished two things so far this month, this week. Um, and the first thing that I read and finished was Northanger Abbey. Um, I just thought this would be the perfect time of year to read this since it's kind of like her gothic kind of satire book. And I really enjoyed this. Um, it would like I had seen the movie many times. Uh, and love that movie, love Miss, you know Mr. Tilney, but I thought the book was a lot different than the movie. But I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the, their relationship. I loved the main character. It was like a shorter one of her works, and I just had a lot of fun with it. So that was fun. And then I read <laughs> a downer. Um, this is really good. This is the Mercies by Karen Millwood Hargrave, and her writing is so beautiful. But this was just like heart wrenching and heartbreaking and anger inducing and involves witch hunts in the 1600s. So yeah, a lot of emotions. <laughs> I had to keep kind of interspersing this with some happier reads, which you'll see because this was like very much a downer, but very beautifully written and just like kind of an important view into this time in history and this location and what was going on, you know, all of that. So in terms of things that <laughs> kept me happier, I have been reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I had read part of this book a few months ago and then I put it down for some reason. And so I decided to pick it up from the beginning and just like really immerse myself in it and actually finish it this time. And I am halfway through and really enjoying it. This is what I needed to kind of balance out the depressing feelings of this book. This is just happy romance. I mean, there's are some emotional issues and things like that, but nothing, you know, when you read a romantic book like this, you expect that they're going to rise above all those issues and, you know, have a happy ending. I'm assuming, I mean, obviously I haven't finished, but I know what's in store. So I am enjoying that a lot and, and very excited to finally be finishing it because I keep meaning to read it and it wasn't the right time, but right now is the perfect time for me. I'm also like, continuing to read my witch books. So this one was a witch book. And then I'm also reading a fantasy witch book. This is a middle grade, Cinders and Sparrows. And this one, I was reading this as my ebook. And often when I do an ebook, I like, that's my book I read right before bed. But this turned out to be much more creepy than I thought it was gonna be. And so now I have to switch to reading this during the day, which I just haven't been able to do the last couple of days because I've been so tired during the day. Um, like it was easy to read an ebook when I'm laying next to my kid's bed, but like I couldn't do this one in the middle of the night because it was freaking me out. And it's a middle grade, but yeah, there was some creepy stuff. So I will be getting back to reading this during the daytime at some point and probably just reading the physical book and since it's not nighttime, but this is following a girl who um, has been an orphan and living in an orphanage and then working as a servant, like she's taking out of the orphanage to work as a servant, but then she's notified that she is the heir to this castle. And so she thinks she's gonna meet her family finally. And it, and you know, she ends up at this castle. Things are creepy. It involves witches, but yeah, there, <laughs> there has definitely been some creepy things. So I don't know how far am I in this only like 66 pages, but there's already been full on creepy scenes. So I look forward to continuing that when I have more capacity to read ebooks during the daytime. Um, so then I switched to my ebook that I'm reading at night while, you know, I 
need something to do while I'm wait, like, you know, watching over my kids, I switched to reading The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, which is, is it, it's Korean mythology, I believe, right? And um, I'm still towards the beginning of this one, but I'm liking the writing so far. It's um, a story where the, this village um, sacrifices a girl every so often to the sea god to be the sea god's bride. And we're following this girl who she wasn't supposed to be the sea god's bride. There was another girl that was like destined to do it. But that girl is in love with our main character. And I've already forgotten our main character's name. Mina is in love with Mina's brother. And so Mina sacrifices herself in place of the the woman that her brother loves. And I just am at the beginning where she sacrificed herself instead. And now she's in the like realm of the spirits or whatever the spirit realm. And so I'm enjoying this one. It's not creepy, at least so far. So that's been helpful as my nighttime ebook to read. And it does have really nice writing. So I'm enjoying that one so far. And then I've also been reading some short stories. If you saw my October TBR, I was saying that I wanted to read a short story for every day of the fall. And I was doing really good. I hit it every day in September, but because things have been, you know, a little off this week, I have fallen behind. And so I haven't like read a, a story every single day, but I have been like reading short stories. Um, the main one that I am almost done with is Maria Maria. And this is, um, kind of like literary fiction but has some magical realism there are witch stories in this or brujas and so it kind of fits in with my reading witchy books it definitely has an autum autumnal like vibe like there's a lot of stories in this that are a bit creepy um yeah but I'm not necessarily fully loving it like there are a couple stories that have really stood out that I have enjoyed and will stick with me and then other ones I'm just like and eh. and I think that's not the writing quality like I think that, that uh, there are a lot of people that are really gonna love this book it's just that it's more literary than I prefer my short stories like I prefer more just like speculative fiction um entertainment kind of short stories and not necessarily something that's kind of like a literary I don't know I just never like sat down and wanted to read like a group of literary short stories and I thought that this would be more speculative and though it has magical realism in it it very much feels like that literary fiction type of story. Um, and so they're not my favorite. There are a couple, like I said, that I like, but I am, I am on the last story. So basically all of this was short stories. And then this last section is a novella. And w in the reviews, it seems like a lot of people like the novella better than the short stories. So I'm looking forward to the novella and hoping, cause I think that one is focused on witches. And so like, I kind of think I'm gonna like that better than the short stories in this. So not like it's a bad collection, but it's not necessarily the thing that I'm loving. But the two short story collections that I'm also kind of interspersing that I'm really enjoying so far are I've been reading a couple of Edgar Allan Poe stories. I'm reading these with Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia. And we've only read a couple so far. We'll read a couple more in October. Um, I guess I don't even need to put a picture. Sorry, I'm not going to put a picture up because it's just a collection of Poe stories. Um, none of the really famous ones. We've read a lot of the really famous ones of his last year. So now we're a little on some of the obscure ones that we both have like a big collection of all of his works. And so we're just kind of reading some of the ones that we didn't read last year. Um, but I'm still enjoying his writing style. There have been a couple that have been flops because they're not some of his most famous, but still like he is very descriptive in his writing and I enjoy it. Um, and then the other one that I'm reading, I will put a picture of this one because I know I have a picture of the cover is Toad Words by T. Kingfisher. And these are like kind of twisted fairy tales, like her version of different fairy tales. And I've read two so far. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of reading, th uh, reading through these fairy tales of hers. Sorry that I don't have a lot of energy in this video. You guys obviously know why, um, but I felt like it would be a little break for me from, you know, taking care of the kids and like focusing on that to talk about my reading. So I wanted to do this video, even though I apologize that I don't have a lot of energy, but I am really enjoying the things that I'm reading. Like, even though, like I said, Maria Maria is not my favorite story collection, I'm still like liking the autumnal vibe of the stories. Um, and so pretty much everything I am reading I am enjoying and I'm having a good reading time even if I'm not having the greatest lifetime this week. So 
that's it for me. Let me know how you all are doing. Hopefully everyone's weekend goes well. Hopefully my kids get um, better this weekend and can go back to school next week and, you know, just feel better in general. And that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Bye.